Hi, I'm going to do a demonstration of an open source uh, rules engine called Open Policy Agent, uh, otherwise known as OPA. Uh, in particular, I'm going to show you OPA Gatekeeper, which allows you to apply those um, rules and policies, for instance, to a Kubernetes cluster and use as an emissions controller, or use it to check different policies that you want enforced in your, um, in your cluster. Um, it is open source. Um, it's uh, very popular. It uses a language that's extensible. The language is called Rego, R-E-G-O, um, and uh, very easy to install, like I said. So let's go ahead and get it started. Um, I'll bring this back up in a second. But uh, our first step is just to install it. And all we need to do is do a kube cuddle apply and it'll put a bunch of CRDs, custom resource definitions, into place and set everything up for us. Um, and then it's ready to go. Now, w when I say ready to go, the engine is there, but there's no rules. Um, and for that, let's pop this back up. There is a um, gatekeeper library that's linked, uh, the open, open policy agent github.io gatekeeper library has a lot of different instructions on here, but it tells you how to set it up. Basically with each of these is you're going to set up a template and then you're going to apply the template um, as uh, a constraint template and then you're gonna apply the constraint. So let's take a look at like some of the rules uh, in case you're not sure what I'm talking about here. There's one here for image digests. And this says, if you have a an image that you're installing via Kubernetes manifest or whatever, Helm chart, whatever, it's going to check to make sure that there is a, um, that there's a digest on that. For example, let's see here. Let's look at the example, the allowed one, right? If I want to go ahead and apply this, this should work because aside from just having a label, it has a digest attached to it. And the reason it does that in this particular case is to make sure that no one could change that because you could point 092 to a different image. Uh, but that SHA-256 would likely change. So uh, the best practice says we're going to require that you give a SHA-256 digest for every image that you're implying uh, into our cut cluster, and we're not going to allow it in if it doesn't have it. So let's go ahead and pull that away, away um, and we'll take a look at this. Let me clear, and we'll try it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and if I was to go through this, Structure a little bit better. I can apply the template for that particular one. So this Kate's image digest template is created. We can take a look, see that it's there, um, and you can see kind of the information about it here, right? It's image digests. It requires a container image to contain a digest. Uh, scroll down, take a look at some of the interesting parts here. The description. It has some of the code there, the rego, the violations, all of that that I need. And this is waiting for us to apply it to something. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and set that up. Um, to put in that constraint, so we're going to use the constraint. Um, and this, like I said, all comes from the image. I, uh, from the image library. Now I've created that that image, um, or that constraint rather. If I was to take a look at this allowed again, this is the same one we saw earlier, right? That if I try to apply this, it should allow it in. So let's try that. Coo cuddle, uh, sorry, apply, dash F, allowed, and no problem, right? It did nothing. But let's do a cat of disallowed. I have another YAML file here that is has an init container and a regular container. Neither of these have the SHA-256. So now if I go ahead and I try to apply disallowed, I get an error back that the webhook, admissions webhook, um, denied container must have a digest. Uh, it uses an image without the digest, right? The init container, same thing. Right, had it without it, so I got an error, and I did not deploy this into my Kubernetes cluster. Um, like I said, 
the image library has plenty of uh, different examples here. Um, you can set lim require limits, require certain classes, make sure you're only using HTTPS, no external IPs, only external IPs, all of that type of stuff is in here. And you can just pull them and you can write your own because it's in a format that's extensible, like I said, using Rego. So I hope that was helpful.